those five reflections we chatted just now. They're used for a lot of different purposes. The first four give rise to a sense of sangwega, realizing that this life of ours is filled with aging, illness, death, separation. And it's not just ours. We look around, everybody's lives are filled with aging, death, and illness, and separation. Even up in the Deva realms, they may not have aging and illness, but they, they have death and separation just like us. In fact, the Buddha makes the point of having us reflect, it's not just us, it's everybody who was born who's going to suffer these things. Now, if the reflection stopped just there, it get pretty depressing. But then there's the fifth one. I'm the owner of my actions, heir to my actions, and the same applies to everybody else. That's our way out. It's through looking at our actions to see what we can do, to see where they come from, to see where they lead. But this is the topic of appropriate attention, looking at things in terms of cause and effect, action and result, and learning to explore the power we have to improve our minds, to improve our actions, to improve the results of our actions, to see how far that can go. So that's one of the emotions that's supposed to be inspired by that reflection is basada, conviction. <clears throat> that we're not trapped forever in this cycle of aging, illness, and death. That actions really do make a difference. This is why we train the mind, because actions come from the mind. And fortunately, the mind can be trained. It's not stuck in either an innate bad nature or an innate good nature. It's got a nature that can be molded, directed to freedom from good or bad natures. We don't usually think about being trapped in a good nature, but there was once a Dharma teacher who said he didn't want to live in a world without suffering because he then couldn't exercise his compassion, which sounds nice, but the more you think about it, the stranger it sounds. You need somebody suffering so that you can exercise your compassion. So you want to get free of that necessity as well. So we do have this freedom of choice. And the question is, are we making the most of this freedom? Because that fact of action and the fact that we can change our minds and change our actions is a neutral fact. It can, it can go either way. We can cause a lot of suffering through our actions, just as we can cause a lot of happiness. So you have to be careful. This is when, where another quality comes in. It's called heedfulness. Realizing that because we have this freedom, we have to be very, very careful with that freedom to make sure we don't abuse it. That's why the Buddha said that skillfulness starts with heedfulness, realizing that our actions are important. So you start paying very careful attention to your actions, to your mind, and realizing that this is your most important possession. And it can go either way, just like money. You can spend money in ways that do a lot of good. You can spend money in ways that do a lot of evil. The money itself is neutral. It's our use of it that is what's really important, that turns it into a force for good or for evil. So you have to be very careful with this principle of action, very careful with your mind. And 
This is the kind of reflection that keeps us on the path, keeps us going. Because the path is not a short path. There's a passage in the canon where the Buddha says there are four kinds of practice. There's the, the quick and easy, quick and pleasant, the quick and painful, the long and pleasant, and the long and painful. And the people for whom it's quick and easy, most of them have already done their practice. It leaves just us. And we can't decide which kind of practice ours is going to be. Of course, everybody, if we could vote, we'd say, I like it quick and easy. Some people might say, well, long and easy. But we can't vote that way. And so if you find that if your practice is long and hard, long and painful, you've got to keep yourself going. You have to be a self-starter. And it's these reflections on heedfulness, these re reflections on freedom, conviction. These are the ones that keep you going, because the actions that we do, the intentions that we have, they're not just a few every day. We're constantly intending this, intending that. That's how we have an experience of the present moment to begin with, it's a combination of past intentions and present intentions. We can't do much about the past intentions. But we can focus on the present ones. And we have to realize that they're important. You can't just slough them off. And if you find yourself getting lazy or discouraged in the practice, you've got to find ways of picking yourself up, dusting yourself off, asking yourself, do you really love yourself? Do you really wish true happiness for yourself? Like that passage we have every day, may I be happy. And our immediate reaction, of course, is, yes, of course, I want to be happy. Then you ask yourself, well, look at your actions. Do, do you act like a person who wants to be happy? Or are you just going through the motions? That's a question we have to ask ourselves all the time, because our actions are determined by our intentions. We can't have someone else come in and clean up our act. We've got to do it ourselves. And it doesn't get easier as you get older. We've noticed how people get more and more ingrained in their ways as they get older. So you can't put it off. And of course you don't know how much more time you have. So always make a point of looking at yourself right now, this teaching on karma. We tend to think of it as being a teaching about past lives and future lives and really irrelevant to our practice, but the, the whole thrust of the teaching is, what are you doing right now? Or as the Buddha says in one of his questions, what have I become as days and nights fly past? Look at what a kind of person you're becoming, given the habits that you've been picking up, the habits that you've been training yourself in, whether you regard yourself as, as being in training in that particular habit, a habit of laziness, a habit, a habit of carelessness. We don't think of ourselves as training ourselves in those directions. But if it's a choice that you keep making over and over and over again, that's the training you're, you're going through. So ask yourself, what kind of training am I giving myself right now, right now? What kind of training would you like to give yourself in the best of all possible worlds? Well, do that. That's how you make it the best of all possible worlds. You can't wait for the conditions around you to become ideal on their own. But you can make a difference in what you're deciding to do right now. And part of you say, well, I can keep it up for a little while, but I can't trust myself to keep it up for a long period of time. You say, well, that, that's a matter for the future. That's a decision you'll be making later down the line. But try to make the best decision you can right now. And each time you do that, you strengthen a good habit in the mind. 
It's all the voices in your head that say, I can't really do this, I don't know if I'm up for it. You don't have to listen to them, no matter how convincing they may seem. You have the right to say no. I want to do what's right right now. I want to do what's skillful right now. And as for how long I'm going to be able to keep it up, that's a decision to be made further down the line. But for right now, I want to do what I know is skillful. It's like discovering you have this little tiny muscle that you never knew about before, and you start exercising it. And with exercise, it gradually becomes stronger. For the time, at the time, right now, it may seem small and weak, but the more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. And even though there may be some setbacks, you can just say, "Well, try it again," and finally get to the point where the strength of your skillful muscles, the muscles in your mind, overwhelms the unskillful ones. Training goes in a new direction. So ask yourself, do I really love myself? If I really love myself, what would I do? And then you do that. You do that frequently enough, and it really will make a difference.